SEC Media Day 2023 coverage continues from Nashville. It's good to be an LSU Tiger in any sport right now. We'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, great times at Baton Rouge. Our coverage presented by MyBookie.ag. Code next round to be eligible for that sign-on bonus when you go to MyBookie.ag. Code next round. The great Jacob Hester with us. He does mornings with our buddy T-Bob uh, in Baton Rouge. Also Sirius XM all the time. What's up, man? How are you? I am doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, the world's a little crazy right now. Uh, for me here at SEC Media Days, I've got a newborn yep. at home. And so my wife's writing me like, hey, how's it going? Are you having fun? <laughs> because, you know, she's got the five babies at home. And so, yeah, yeah I, I'm uh, – Ooh, I feel a little guilty right now, but I'm having fun, though. Well, yeah, just don't tell money. her. Make money. Got to feed yeah, those kids Just somehow, don't tell right? her. Well, yeah. My oldest is – he's 13 years old. He's six foot, 220 pounds. So he is a big boy, and he is the one that – I don't know how you can possibly eat that much food. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you guys, Meathead Radio, I heard you talking yeah. about five. What are the – so 13, and then just go to the ages. 13, 11, 10 – seven and just now all boys all right, boys all yep. four boys and we're just having baby girl number one who's three weeks old so your house is a mixture of body odor and axe body spray right now a, a lot of it yeah but hey we're that's fortunate just, that's just t-bob yeah well, t well <laughs> if t-bob puts on axe we're fortunate that morning <laughs> uh but yes uh, my 13 year old he is uh he's trying like he's taller than me now right so it's a it's a it's a dynamic where he tries to like call me you know little names and and short and i'm like hey low man always wins <laughs> remember <laughs> that all right so i had to put that old man strength on him every once in a while so i mean look you played running back uh, what's he gonna play at that size uh, he's playing edge right now oh yeah, they, they look at that smile that's good nfl money so i played nose guard until i was a junior in high school i was 253 pounds in high school playing nose guard uh and we had we were playing in east texas we're playing longview texas were you fat uh, no, I mean, I, well, maybe if you ask somebody else, I didn't think I was, uh, but like we, we were playing East Texas. So it was hotter than the devil's lair outside in September. Yeah. We had like seven people cramp up and like, Hey, you used to play running back, like in junior high. Like, can, can you just get back there? We'll snap it to you. That was our play. Like direct snap to me. I ran for like 250 yards that night and I stayed at running back ever since. And so maybe he can make the transition. I don't know, but I like him at edge of defense. <laughs> so let's talk about LSU, uh, a team you follow very closely, obviously. And for the first time in quite a while, they will, in all likelihood, leave here either picked to beat Alabama in the West, or it's going to be yeah. very, very close. A credit to what Brian Kelly has done very quickly there. Yeah, it's going to be close. I still think Alabama might get the edge there, but it is going to be yeah. close. So whoever well, gets it, we're not, you know, I uh, think it'll be Yeah, I think a lot of people will vote Alabama because that game's in Tuscaloosa, and that's a perfectly yeah. legitimate reason. And they don't obviously. want to be on freezing cold takes. You know, <laughs> they, they, yeah. they, they don't want to end up on that yes. website. Yes. But, uh, look, I, I think it's going to be a great game. When you look at LSU – when Brian Kelly takes over, you're playing a Texas ball against Kansas State where you got like 30 something scholarship players. And I was embarrassed. I'm like, this is not the program that I know. Like, LSU is like a standard of college football because outside of Alabama, the last two decades, they've won the second most national championships. Mm -hmm. And you go and you watch that game, and it was like, it was a quick fall from 2019 to that. And you're wondering, like, who can come in here and fix this? And Brian Kelly accepted the challenge. I mean, you're coming from Notre Dame, winning as head coach in Notre Dame's history, and you come accept that challenge, and, and that's not easy. Y'all know the expectations of a place like LSU and what you have to do. Now you're going to get all the resources, but where they were to where they ended up last year, I don't think any of us, even if you had purple and gold glasses, there's no way that you could have imagined the season going like it did a year ago because you didn't know who the players were going to be. Jaden Daniels, and watching LSU last year, I knew he ran the football a lot, and I knew he led the team in rushing. But I didn't realize 186 carries with that frame. I know he's bulked up yeah. a little bit in this offseason. But if I told you that he's going to lead the team again in attempts, would you be a little surprised with that loaded backfield? No, I don't think so because it's going to be a running back back in yeah. yeah. And LSU has been very successful in the past. 03, uh, 07, 11, all national championship appearances, they were all running back by committee. Like Clyde Edwards Dealer in 19 was, was really the one that was an outlier. I mean, he, he played a ton that year, but every other year, that's what LSU's kind of always been. So you're going to have that again this year. So I think Jane Daniels is absolutely going to be the guy that leads the team in rushes and and now you also have Garrett Nussmeyer, who's earned your trust. And so you can, I don't want to say take more chances because you don't want Jaden Daniels to get hurt, but you don't have to be cautious when you're calling a play. Maybe more design quarterback runs. Now, some of his stuff is just ad lib, but I think he's going to lead the team in rush. I think he's going to attempt probably maybe even yards. I mean, he had, what, 11 touchdowns a year ago. I think LSU's at their best when he plays like that. Were you surprised Nussmeyer didn't leave, though? Because that's one of those guys – 
if he played a full season, he could end up being like one of the top five quarterbacks in the SEC right now. Yeah, a little surprised just because of the way college football is now and because Garrett's probably like, I know I could be a starter in I think half the schools in the SEC, maybe even more so. But, I mean, he's one of those guys who grew up wanting to go to LSU, thinks LSU's home, and I think that certainly kept him there. And, look, he got a little taste of it last year in the bowl game, and I don't know, like, what that's going to look like this year. Jaden Daniels is your quarterback. I mean, he's here today. He's QB1. But they played him enough last year that probably kept his interest there, and he knows it's going to be his team for at least two seasons. You know Nick Saban really well going into this season. I can't remember the quarterback – position being so up in the air at, in Tuscaloosa in his mind how do you think that plays out uh in camp when it opens up will he go into the season letting this thing play out even into games well I was I was kind of like okay well they're gonna you know go with the guys that they recruited out of high school in the spring which I kind of enjoyed them and Georgia both I'm like you know what they're not gonna go chase somebody out of the portal they've got their guys they're gonna let them compete and go out there and see who wins a job and then you go get Tyler Buckner. Now, you know, a lot can play into that. Obviously, with Tommy Reese coming down from Notre Dame, he knows that quarterback very well. But I thought one of those guys, honestly, would come out of the spring, hey, this is our guy. This is going to be QB1. But, you know, you didn't have that situation. And so what time period do you put on that? You know, do you put two weeks on it when you get in training camp? Because I fully believe Coach Saban wants to have a guy going in because you don't have a lot of time. you got Texas right. coming to your place. Now, it's a home game compared to last year, so I don't think you want to go into the season saying, okay, yeah, it's a handful of guys or it's these two guys. I think two weeks in a training camp, he wants to have his guy. Now, Tyler Buckner, as we know, Nick Saban's not going to promise you anything. You would assume he maybe has a little bit of a lead because he is coming over from Notre Dame. I want to see the terminology. We know Coach Saban, like, he's probably going to make Tommy Reese learn his terminology on offense. And so that was going to be an advantage for Tyler Buckner. But if he doesn't do that, then that's not the advantage that I thought it would be. So can Ty Simpson come in and win that job? And, I mean, Jalen Milrow, I feel like, has to play in some capacity. Like, you have to have something for him. I think he's too special of an athlete. Then that becomes that dynamic. How much of that do we truly do not to mess, off, uh, mess up our rhythm? So I think you you know, you know name a quarterback. He's your starter until he proves you he can't be your starter. And then Jalen Milrow comes in, and he has a certain amount of plays. Best butt chewing you ever saw Nick Saban give. Who that list is long and distinguished. Um Gosh, that is a great one. Did you ever get a really good one? I never did. Yeah, I mean, you were a really good player. I, I, mean, I, I never did, and I was very thankful. How many yeah. fumbles did you lose? For that? I had one. Yeah, yeah that's why you never had, got a bunch of I had shooter. one. Yeah. That bothers him the most. That right? one turning the ball was, over. Was, yeah. was that yeah. against Kentucky? Uh, Georgia. Okay. Uh, we're in we're in Athens and it the, it was not going our way it just it was not and we would call a fullback dive press the front side cut it back make my guy David Pollock miss and I'm a young <laughs> freshman I'm feeling really good about myself and I'm going yeah I'm running you know 20 yards down the field and I've got green grass over here and I've got Thomas Davis over here who's an All American safety played 15 whatever years in the NFL as a linebacker playing safety in college. <laughs> And in my mindset, I'm like, I'm going to go set a tone. I'm a freshman, but I'm going to go set a tone. I'm going to go run over Thomas Davis, and I'm going to get our sideline hype. We need some juice right now, right? Yeah. Now I could go run for like 15 more yards, but I'm going to veer right here. That story ends Thomas Davis one, Jacob Pester nothing. Uh, the ball <laughs> goes the up yes. in the air uh, like 30 feet, and uh, they jump on it. And that was the last time that I was like, you know what? I'm not going to go test that All-American. <laughs> so that that one was a bad one for me. Was but, that the um, David Green game where he couldn't miss? He couldn't miss. I think yeah. it was like 19 of 20 oh, yeah. or something like that. So we all got butt chewings that day. But, uh, you know, the, the quarterbacks, I saw him get – on Jamarcus Russell a couple times. He got on Marcus Randall a couple times. He got on uh, – you, you mentioned D Jamarcus fumbling. looks like a guy that didn't like to practice. Am uh, I off there? You know, he was very talented. So, like, you know, the practice portion of it, uh, <laughs> maybe maybe not as yeah, much because right. he knew he can make almost every throw. But y'all are talking about turnovers. He got, he got Ali Broussard one time. Uh, he had a fumble. We were up. It's like a Jefferson Pilot game. We're playing Mississippi <laughs> State. We're beating them by like 47 <laughs> points. The, the worst time to mess up. With oh, that's that's right. when, You're exactly yeah, right. That's that is the worst, worst time yep. with him. And Allie, Allie fumbled the ball, and I, I swear he met him at the numbers. <laughs> he met him at the numbers. And so, like, Saban got him, and then Derek Dooley got him. He's a running back coach. And then Jimbo, after the game, got him. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you're right, though. Like Because Coach Saban, to me, the thing that when people ask me what makes him special – I always tell people the smallest thing is the biggest thing for him, and not in a micromanaging way, 
but he wants everything covered. He wants everything to go the way that he has kind of set it up to go. And I always appreciated that. Even like I was telling someone earlier, like snack during training camp where you go into the tent and you get oranges and you get water. He's like, no, you go in there, you get your orange, you get your water, and you get back on the field. You don't linger on. Just everything had a purpose to it. But I always appreciate that. I come from a military background. My grandfather's both in the military, my dad in the military. And you do that, you know, you do those type of things for a purpose. There's a reason why you do them. And somebody might be like, man, why do you care about that? Well, he cares because everything builds to what he wants the ultimate process to be. It seems like there's common. And I've always thought this even before he was at LSU between he and Brian Kelly. I mean, like yeah. from a distance, it looks like Brian Kelly's got a lot of that in him, too. He does. Now, personality is a little bit different, yeah. but he does. And I'll tell you, I was at a training camp practice last year. And they had no pads on, and they were practicing where guys were ending up on the ground, and and guys were hitting too hard. And he like he's like he stops the whole practice. He's like, "What are we doing out here? If we wanted to have pads on and go physical, like that's what we would do. This isn't about that. This is about going through your keys and learning how to step the right way and all these different things." He's like, "We do everything for a reason. We're not out here. You're not going to impress me today with no pads on." So it's kind of the same way, yeah. like. It's not always going to be the most difficult thing that you've ever done. Like, we're doing this because I know we have to do this to be better. And Nick was just the same way like that. Like, hey, if we're going to do this, there's a purpose, and we got to stay within that purpose. What, what's your expectation? I've got LSU winning the national championship. I really do. I think year two yeah. is going to be special for this team if they can stay healthy. Yeah. Um, I, what's your expectation? I mean, I think there's three teams in the SEC that can win a national championship, Georgia, Bama, and LSU. And that's not a slight of like Tennessee or anybody else. They can have great seasons, but those are three champions championship teams for Alabama it's the quarterback for LSU it's the health for Georgia it's okay we know the schedule once you you know face a team that's going to be you know maybe Tennessee in November it might not be until the SEC championship game how do you react to that and also we're not talking about Georgia they're also breaking in a new quarterback but everybody has the conversation about Alabama breaking in a new quarterback and never has it about Georgia so we'll see how Carson Beck ends up doing but yeah I think those are three true national championship contenders now they all have their questions question marks and we'll see if those can get answered but they have the talent they have the coaching staff and they got the most important position going back to it like I'm always going to if you have your quarterback coming back and what he did a year ago then you're always going to start ahead of a lot of teams now George is just a beast that's hard to explain because of what they've been able to do back-to-back -back national champs but we'll see how it's just so hard because of their schedule until you get to November at Tennessee to figure out exactly what they're going to be and for them they're probably going to figure some things out throughout that process. Like, that's a good thing for them. Carson Beck has – and it feels disrespectful to the other teams, but when you look at their schedule, it's hard to find a loss there. Yeah, but it's you played the game, and our coverage brought to you in part by our friends at Michelson Laser Vision. More on them a, a little bit later on. But as a guy who played the game at a high level – can, and you've won two national championships, the old fat and happy. I mean, how tough is it not having a big game early for this team to where maybe they are not as sharp as iron by the time they get to someone who can challenge I them? always liked having a big game. I liked having a game number one because the entire offseason – you got a game that you're like focused on when, when times are tough, when you don't feel like doing another sprint, you're like, Hey, I, I got to, I have to do it. I mean, we've had in my career, we had like a top 10 Virginia tech team after Mississippi state. So we were Mississippi state conference game, first game of the year, and then a top 10 team. And that was always a better off season for me. So like for that reason, and then when times get tough against that tough team that you're going to play, can you find it? Now, Kirby somehow has that team believing that they were like a 7-5 and five team or whatever they, they were <laughs> spitting out there, and they truly believe that. I had them out in L.A. for the national championship. But that's going to be you know a conversation when you go on the road, depending on what Tennessee is, when you get into the SEC championship game, when you play a game like against South Carolina. They had Missouri game last year, right? And Missouri had an opportunity to win that game. So I always liked having one uh, early in the season. I, I liked being able to have that game to kind of motivate you for the offseason. I liked having it. Like I love the fact that LSU has Florida State game. I do. I know a lot right of people don't gate. like that. Yep. I love that. It, it's a game that you know you can't half step into the season. You know you have to sprint into the season, so you know your off season has to be done in a way where you're ready to go for that game. And so, yeah, it could be – that. When we're trying to pick apart Georgia, there's not a lot there, and so that's probably the one thing that we would point to. Now, now, I said this last year, and I was wrong, but I said there's no way Georgia can go undefeated in the SEC regular season back-to-back -back years. Now we're talking about them going for three yeah. times. I mean, it's just a, a natural, like, due process. They've got to lose a game sooner yeah. or later, right? 
You would think so. Um, I mean, now, you mentioned Missouri. I mean, I, I don't know how they didn't lose that game last. No, I, I'm with you. Uh, when you look at the East, it's just fl- Florida being down, not really knowing what Missouri is going to be. South Carolina, there was some ebbs and flows. Kentucky has been really strong last year. They took a step back. Now they get Devin Leary. So it's, it's interesting there. But and Tennessee was a really good football team last year, but they weren't ready for that. And so when you start to look at some of the teams around the East. I don't know that they can challenge Georgia. So that that helps them out. And then, of course, you look at crossover games like Auburn's. Well, they're a little down to their standards right now. So it's like a perfect storm of them being really damn good and then the schedule being a little bit weaker. Yeah. Now, they had Oklahoma on the schedule, but the SEC right, right. you know made them get rid of that game or whatever the, the case might have been, although Texas and Alabama are playing. Well, yeah, like, listen, God, well, don't go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> but Georgia Georgia fans appreciate you reading fine print and always pointing out <laughs> they're supposed to be playing That's Oklahoma. Right. We yeah. do that same thing, too. Yeah. Uh, all right, he is Jacob Hester. Our coverage presented by MyBookie.ag. Code next round to get that sign-up bonus. Also, Michaels and Laser Vision. Hester was telling us he had it. Yeah, you've yeah. had LASIK uh, yeah. not once but twice, it, right? It is It is life-changing. It is a life-changing. I was telling you all during the break, I mean, I was Coke bottle glasses. I was Horace Grant, James Worthy goggles playing baseball growing up. And so, like, t- to be able to have that, yeah, it was a life-changer for me. No more <laughs> squinting in the studio See, I, either. I don't just say it. Jacob <laughs> Hester. Right. Yeah. I know. Now HR has got a W9 Jacob. we got to pay <laughs> Jacob for saying that. Uh, 205-969-8100. Ask for Amy. She's going to uh, schedule a hassle-free consultation. You'll never, ever uh, have to wear those glasses or contacts again. MichaelsonLaserVision.com for more information. And mybookie.ag code next round. The great Jacob Hester with us on the next round.